This is Ken Boyd with St. Louis Test Preparation. This is another one of our financial accounting videos. Financial Accounting 16 talked about proof of cash and the bank reconciliation. What we started with was this information, and we used it to create this bank reconciliation, which I covered in the prior video. What I started at the end of that video was, if you jump over to the proof of cash document, let's go up to the top first, you see the same type of information that we used in the bank reconciliation here at the top with a little more information. And I first talked about how do you set up the proof of cash document. And what you see here is, is that the balance per bank, per the bank statement information, is across the top of the document. So here's the balance on October 31st, the beginning of the period, November 30th, the end of the period. And we have receipts and disbursements during November in the middle, which is the hardest part. And what I suggested was, is that you simply do the bank rec for October 31st here on the left-hand side. And the bank rec for November 30th, you've already done on the other template right here. So you've already done the November 30th bank reconciliation and the information on the right-hand side of the proof of cash is taken from that bank reconciliation on the other tab. The hard part is filling in the receipts and disbursements. And one thing to remember at the beginning is that the receipts and disbursements relate to the current month during November. So let's go through each of these. You can see that I have numbers for the explanations down the side. So let's look at number three first. It says, deposits in transit at 1030. They are added as a reconciling item to the bank rec. They are excluded as a November receipt. The books, the accounting records record the receipt in October. The bank recorded the receipt in November. So now let's go up to number three, the deposit in transit at the beginning of the period. That's a reconciling item in the bank rec because the bank statement didn't record the deposits until later. However, another thing the bank did was they recorded this $4,200 as a receipt in November, whereas the books recorded it as a receipt in the prior month, October. So when we're reconciling from the bank, to the books receipts, we need to subtract this receipt because the bank receipt included it in November, the book included it in the prior month, October. That's why it's a subtraction. Let's look at number four, which is the deposit and transit on November 30th. In the bank reconciliation, we add it because it was a deposit and transit. It was not included in the November 30th bank rec. So if I go back to receipts, I keep in mind that during November, the bank did not include this 3680 in receipts. The books did. So I have to add to go from the bank receipts in November to the book receipts. I have to add that deposit. Outstanding checks October 31st. If I go to the bank rec again, the far right, I'm sorry, November 30th, I see that the October 31st, let's do that one first. So outstanding check switching gears October 31st. Like you see in any bank rec, to go from the bank to the books, we have to subtract checks that were written per the books but were not included in the bank statement we subtract. That also means that during November, the bank included these checks as a disbursement. The books included them as a disbursement in the prior month. To go from disbursements for the bank to the books, we have to subtract $3,700. Outstanding checks, November 30th, the end of the period. If I go to my bank rec, 
Outstanding checks are subtracted from the bank balance at the top to get to the book because the bank did not subtract these checks yet. That also means that the books included the disbursement, these 5,001 in checks, during November. The bank did not. The bank don't, doesn't include the disbursements for the 5,001 until December. So to reconcile from the bank's disbursements to the book, we have to add the deposit. So you're starting to get the idea of how this works. A bank error. Check charge to the client and error. If I look to the bank rec, that has to get added back in because the book balance, the bank balance was too low, they subtracted it near it. It gets added back in. What that also means is that the bank's disbursements were too high by the amount of the error. We have to subtract to get to the books. Company error, they recorded a check for too large an amount because they transposed numbers. If I look in the bank statement for November, the 180 has to get subtracted out because the book balance is too low in the bank statement. What that also means is, is that the books recorded $180 too much in disbursement, so the book is higher by $180. So to reconcile disbursements in November from the bank to the book, we have to add the 180. Bank charges were a reconciling item at November 30th. They get subtracted because the book did not include the charges and the bank did, so we have to subtract in our bank reconciliation. It also means Scoot back up there again. We add it in our book bank reconciliation because the bank balance is lower by $18 in the book because the bank includes the $18 in charges. That also means that the bank's disbursements during November are higher because the bank includes the bank charges. So we have to subtract bank charges to get to the book balance. Last one, um, a deposit that the client made, the book made, of a client check that was not paid returned insufficient funds. The bank reduced the balance for the insufficient funds, so we have to add to get to the book balance and the bank reconciliation. That also means that since the bank subtracted that NSF check, didn't include it in deposits, in other words, that the bank's disbursements are higher than the books, so it, we have to subtract the NSF check $220 to get to the book balance. That's quite a mouthful. We add the receipts, we add the disbursements, and if you've done your work correctly, the bank, the book balance, balance plus receipts, less disbursements should equal the ending balance for the books. Bank balance plus receipts minus disbursements should equal the bank's balance at November 30th and you've completed your proof of cash. And remember also that the reason the auditor wants to do the proof of cash is that you're reconciling four numbers rather than just one, one being the cash balance at the end of the period. You're reconciling four columns, and that's just what we did in the proof of cash here. We actually reconciled four numbers rather than just one, which to an auditor an auditor feels that that's a more effective way to audit cash. That's as far as we're going to get on the proof of cash. Remember on the website, stltest.net, our toughest accounting topics, live chat courses and small groups that I teach all the time on the most uh, in-demand topics. They're listed here and the dates are always updated. And also remember that the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, I teach in a free live chat about once a week. We cover about a chapter a week. You can email me if you'd like to get a meeting link to those free online meetings in the book. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.